Brian Leakey doesn't understand refraction. In a discussion with M MC Toon, he said, among much more, this. So the atmosphere really is acting like a lens. According to the experts, say the bottom of this little stand here uh, represents the bottom of the clouds. And so as you can see here, the light is way above, you know, it's well above what would be the bottom of the clouds in this example. So let's see what happens. I turn off the lights and set my iPhone to record and uh, I'm showing myself here recording all of this with another camera and I pulled the light back on the table and watch what happens here. Ooh, check it out. There's that refraction taking place again. It's got the light. It made the sun set, first of all, below the horizon in this case. And uh, let's just show this. And the platform represents the bottom of the clouds. So the sun's going, 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 going down. And oop, there it is. The bottom of the clouds illuminated by a light source that's well above the clouds. But uh, for anybody who hadn't seen it, uh, with just atmospheric lensing or magnification. This whole lens nonsense he just copied from Rob Skiba. I'm preparing to do the demonstration with the lens again, but then the proper way. But that will be another video. This video is about the challenge by Leakey to demonstrate downward the bending of light in the atmosphere in a real life experiment. He says it like this. You say things toward and then I ask for demonstrations over and over and over for years. We get uh, sugar water in a fish tank, okay? Flat earthers always ask for experiments that are very hard to perform in real life. Refraction in the atmosphere takes place when there is a density gradient in the atmosphere and it's governed by Fermat's principle. That is, that light always takes the path that takes the shortest time. Flat earthers and some globe earthers as well, always talk about Snell's law, which is a special case of Fermat's principle. The argument that refraction needs two different media in order to work is simply not true. Refraction also works in an anisotropic medium, that is the same medium with the density gradient. But anyway, the effects of refraction are only clearly visible over long distances and it is difficult to get a null measurement without refraction. Refraction is always there. So the only so solution is to force a larger amount of refraction than normally would occur and in such a way that you can measure its effects with and without refraction. And this is mostly done by shining a laser through a fish tank, filled with a solution of sugar in water. And it's just this ex experiment that Leakey has excluded from being a an answer to his question. I come up with this arrangement. I used a simple pointer that I mounted on a level. I put it in a small angle to horizontal and shown it at a piece of paper at a distance of 11 meters in the living room of my house. This was my null measurement. Then I placed a cooling element with a temperature of minus 18 degrees Celsius directly under the light beam. This would lower the temperature of the air directly above the cooling element, making the air denser. In this way, I created a density gradient. Such a density gradient is comparable with an observation over a large body of water where the water is colder than the air above it. The density gradient I created was much steeper than the standard gradient over water, but I needed such a steep gradient in order to be able to see the effect over such a short distance. To show the gradient I put a thermometer just above the light beam. Its reading is shown in the right hand bottom of the screen. On the left side I show the point of light on the paper that has a millimeter division printed on it. I start off with the null measurement. The moment the light is not visible for a short time is the moment I place the cooling element under the light beam. My hands blocked the beam for a short moment. What we see is that the point of light goes down 
almost immediately. At the moment of placing the cooling element, the temperature difference of the air below the light beam and that above is the largest. From that moment you see in the sped up footage that the temperature above the light beam drops, therefore reducing the temperature difference, therefore reducing the speed at which the deviation takes place. At some moment I rearrange the cooling element a bit differently by lifting one side up. At that moment you see another jump in the position of the point of light. All in all the light shifts around 3 mm within a time frame of around 15 minutes. So lowering the temperature, thus increasing the density of the air, made the light bend downwards. This matches with the standard observation over long distances over large bodies of water. 3 mm over a distance of 11 meters means that the downward refractive angle is 0 0.0156 degrees. But again, I had to force the steeper gradient in order to demonstrate the downward bending in the, of light in the atmosphere. I guess that Brian Leakey won't accept this demonstration because it contradicts his silly notion that obstruction of objects at a distance can only be caused by upward refraction. However, upward refraction only takes place under conditions where the bottom is much warmer than the top, a situation that is inherent unstable. I know that he is wrong and I demonstrated that he is wrong. I took on his challenge and I predict that he will either ignore it or just deny that it is an answer to his question. I'd say, just let him.